Here's another example where inverse trig functions can be helpful um, in uh, helping us solve an equation that has trig expressions in it. So what we have here is 3 cosine squared x plus 5 cosine x minus 2 equals 0. Uh, now we're trying to solve for x here, but obviously what makes this difficult is it, it kind of feels like a quadratic, but it has trig functions in it. So uh, you may have seen problems like this before, and uh, just because of the, the feel of it, it looking like a quadratic equation, uh, you can actually treat it like a quadratic equation and try to factor it and all those good things. Uh, the only difference is instead of having like x plus 7 and x minus 1, you have a cosine x as opposed to just an x. So let's see how, how this guy would factor. 3 cosine squared. I think the only way that factors is 3 cosine x and cosine x. I think that would be the only way to get 3 cosine squared x. Uh, the last two terms multiply to a 2. So it's either a 1 and a 2 or a 2 and a 1. I think in order to get a, a 5 for the middle term, it'd have to be a 1 and a 2. And it would have to be a minus 1 and a plus 2. So uh, you could FOIL this just to verify this is the correct factorization, but I think that it is. And so we can um, set each of these guys independently equal to 0. So we'd have 3 cosine x minus 1 equals 0, or cosine x plus 2 equals 0. Solve both of these guys for cosine x. So we'd have cosine x equals 1 third and cosine x equals negative 2. Now right off the bat I noticed something. Uh, cosine, if you think about the unit circle, the cosine function uh, can only be as large as positive 1 and as low as negative 1. Uh, the range of the cosine graph, if you just think about the, you know, the, the uh, periodic graph of the cosine function, it only goes between minus 1 and 1 there is no angle that will make cosine be negative 2. So this one will yield no solution. So we can just talk, toss that one away. Um, the one I'm more interested in is this first one. There is an angle such that cosine of that angle would be 1 third, but the problem is, is, that, is that that's not a, a normal uh, standard angle on the, uh, on the unit circle. So I, I can see it. I, I think these two angles here would give you a small cosine value, a small x coordinate of the point, but I don't really know where those are. So I think this would be a good time to go to our calculator and, and uh, use that to help us figure out what the um, you know what the uh, sine, in, or I'm sorry, what the um, angle would be such that cosine of it would yield uh, a third here. Okay, so let's um, jot this down on the separate page so we have some more space. Cosine of x equals one third and uh, let me switch to my calculator here all right and so we'll need to take the inverse cosine the inverse cosine of one third this will give us a, a radian value and just to make sure we get a, a decimal approximation I'm actually going to write 1.0 divided by 3 same thing but we get 1.23 radians, and that, that sounds very reasonable. 1.23, x would be uh, approximately 1.23 radians, but we also have some other things to, uh, to consider though. Uh, on the one hand, we have to also include any additional two pi radians to that, so we'll have 1.23 plus 2k pi radians, where k is, is any integer. Um, but don't forget, there's another radian angle that should be a solution as well, and that's the one down here in yellow. So now, how, how can we find this angle? Because this is not 1.23 radians. That's above the x-axis. This would be negative 1.23 radians. So we need to add in uh, an additional solution. So we say x uh, could also be approximately negative 1.23 plus 2k pi radians where k is any integer. And these are very different. Don't think just because they differ in sign that um, that's a, a small issue. That's, that's actually a pretty big deal. These give you very different answers here. So this would be a, a, another great reason to, uh, to use inverse trig functions to help us solve some of these um, more complicated 
uh, trig equations that aren't, aren't just simple unit circle values. And uh, again, this is a very popular type of problem where you set a, a equation up that has trig expressions in it, but that it looks like a quadratic that you actually have to factor into two separate pieces.